Hey folks, you can be pretty or you can be daring with fervent astronomy and today I have the Sony FE 40mm f2.5 G lens and this is a diminutive little prime from Sony. It was released a few years ago and astrophotography is not probably its forte but we're gonna test it out anyway because I'm been really into like 40 to 45 millimeter lenses for some reason come on my journey come on my journey dear viewer this lens is super compact i mean it's not quite a pancake but it is super super small and that's probably gonna bode ill for astrophotography uh but eh, well what can you do on the outside uh it is well made and i think it's metal throughout the outer construction this is kind of Sony's take on what Sigma was doing with their I series contemporary lenses, but I would say the Sigma lenses still are a lot, a lot sexier on the outside. But this one's fine. This is this is pretty good. We have a small but well dampened manual focus ring, a clicky aperture ring. Uh -huh. It doesn't have a lock function, but it does have this A, so you can put it in the A setting and then control it. From the camera and this lens does have a fairly strong detente there so it takes a little bit of torque to get it out so I think you'll be fine as far as not having that lock it is a declickable aperture though we do have a uh, button here to take the clicks out if you want to use it for more of a video lens and on the other side here we have an autofocus manual focus switch and a customizable button it's got a teeny little lens cap here which is a 49 millimeter lens cap because it's got this kind of snoot like hood I don't know if you can see that and there's a little window cut out there because for as I guess the diameter of the lens uh, is sort of hiding the fact that the actual lens elements are teeny weeny the hood just bayonets off and here we see that we have our you know tiny tiny front element there surrounded by basically uh, all the mechanisms and that type of thing so that's probably going to bode ill for things like vignetting and whatever but it's a 2.5 40 mil lens i mean what do, what do we expect here so overall i'm not quite hopeful <laughs> but interested so let's pop into lightroom and we'll see together uh, how this lens does and before we go there's like technically a rubber gasket around the mount there technically but it's barely perceptible hey folks welcome to lightroom here we've got a group of samples all taken with the sony 40 millimeter f 2.5 g lens quite a compact little lens i've been really into 40 ish millimeter lenses recently testing out a lot of them and Got my hands on this one and want to see how it does so to that effect we've got a series of samples here these ones are all tracked no tripod shots today they're all tracked the fornax mounts light track 2. of course fervent astronomy is fornax's north american distributor so if you are interested in learning more about that mount please head over to fervenastronomy.com you can do so and all of these photos are taken with the sony a7r mark 5 60 megapixel camera they're all shot for one minute and they are done at ISO 320. If you're interested in knowing why, there will both be a link somewhere at the top of the screen, most likely, to a video I shot on the subject. Or if you go into the description, there will be a link. Follow it back to the website, and there will be an article link there that can explain to you ISO invariants. And while you're there, you can actually download these samples as well. Just keep in mind, I did put in the legwork. I had to buy this lens. They're my copyrighted works. So please use them to assess the lens and for no other purpose. Thanks very much. I have mostly samples here from uh, one basically run, but I do have one that's going to be a double just because of some tracking difficulties. And then I have another one over here. We can just get this out of the way. This is a black shot, 30 seconds at ISO 12,800, just to show, and this is taken with my modified A7R Mark IV, rather. This just shows that there is no infrared light source in this lens. And if we come over here, this is going to be the primary wide open sample. Here we can see that things are nice and, and round. Here we can see that there's like a little trailing. I 
I believe I must have kicked my tripod or something and brought it out of alignment slightly. On the back of the camera, none of this minor trailing shows up, so I don't get to get surprised by that until I come home and look at it in Lightroom, but it seems good enough that we can still work with it. So we'll try and ignore the, the trailing here, but we do have this other sample, which of course is not trailed, and we can use this as our primary wide open sample. Since we're here, first thing we're going to try and assess is vignetting, but I mean, it's quite dark. It's already f2.5, so we're just going to bump the exposure once or twice. No, twice is too much. All right, you can see that there is some vignetting here in the corners. It's not too, too bad, although this lens does have a tiny front element. And if you look in the navigator, you can see a little bit easier, a little bit of that. You will notice a green color cast. There's a lot of aurora the night that I took these samples, so that's probably where that's coming from. And overall, that vignetting doesn't seem too bad. If we pop over here to the sort of sequential samples, this is at f2.5, this is at f2.8, you can see that we do get a transformation in the histogram when we stop down, the whole histogram shifts left. So if there's any contrast benefit to stopping down a little bit, do know that you are sacrificing a little bit of exposure in the darker parts of the frame as well. But overall, the contrast doesn't seem too bad. This isn't a really bright lens to begin with. If we look here in the center, we see right away that we've got some purple-blue fringing, so a little bit of chromatic aberration there. It's to be expected in a lot of these lenses. This isn't too bad. It's not bloating the stars out horrendously, so I think that's probably livable. We can clean that up in post. And overall, things are, I would say, pretty decent through the center of the frame. If we come over here and we look at the corner here, we see that we do have some funky star shapes. This is astigmatism. This is not coma. Some of you might have been used to calling this coma. Coma, or chromatic aberration, is actually an entirely different optical fault. This aberration is astigmatism, and it's a little bit wonkier than usual. Now, here's a pretty classic example. You will tend to get these bird shapes, and what's happening here is the lens is having trouble focusing a pinpoint of light like a star in a pinpoint. So it's getting stretched out in two directions. The direction that radiates from the center of the frame to the edges, that's tangential, and that'll be responsible for this portion. And the wings of this little space bird are sagittal astigmatism. Sagittal is orthogonal to tangential, so it will kind of look like it rings the frame anywhere you go where you have a sufficiently bright star that's getting a little bit of that astigmatism. You'll see that the wings will come up the side and then there will be maybe a stretching here if you have tangential. So tangential astigmatism and sagittal astigmatism. And yeah, it's, I mean, pretty classically bad, I guess. Uh, it's, you know, not exactly what we would want, but it is a pretty classic rendition of astigmatism. And when it becomes a problem, in my view, is when it makes the stars around the edges look a different size or, you know, if it's really bad shape than the stars in the center of the frame. And I can find it distracting personally. If you have a really clean lens at flat field, you'll have sort of a consistent star size the whole way. And here I can just see that things are starting to look a little wonky over there. So, you know what? It is what it is. It happens in a lot of lenses. Come here to the mid-frame. We can see that we do have astigmatism. And we can also tell pretty quickly here that we have field distortion. So what's field distortion? Well, come into the middle here. Really good focus. The stars are really nice and tight. You can see how they are next to the little mouse cursor here. The brighter stars are a little bit bigger. But things look pretty okay. If we start to go out in the frame, I know that the astigmatism is starting to come into play a little bit, but you can see that everything gets a little bit bigger. And the further to the edge here, the more things start to increase in size. That's because the stars are literally going out of focus because this part of the lens wants to focus in a different plane than the center of the lens. And that's just part and parcel to the fact that lenses are made of curved glass elements and you're trying to focus light onto a flat center plane, and that's difficult to do. So I mentioned coma and how what we saw is not coma. So what is coma? Well, luckily I don't really see too many examples of it here or any real example of it. Like you could make an argument for maybe a little bit of it, but I don't really think that it's coming to play, but I'm beating around the bush. Coma is when one side of point light sources will start to fuzz out. Could be pointing away from the center of the frame or towards. If it's towards, it's called internal. If it's away, it's called external coma. Why is it called coma? Well, coma from chromatic aberration, that's the technical term, and it's named as such after comets. Comets get what's called coma, which is like a fuzzy haze of gas and dust around them as they start to melt. 
and that is you know similar looking i guess to coma when we see it here on stars so they named it after comets pretty cute now that we've looked at this well-tracked sample we'll just pop over here to the slightly less well-tracked sample and you can really see the green cast here from that aurora so we're going to stop down from 2.5 to 2.8 to 3.2 to 3.5 and to f4 here we're getting really dark and you know some people prefer to stop down a bit to try and clean up the edges and corners and use various lenses for tracked panoramas maybe this is the type of lens to use that for so let's pop into the middle and here we'll step backwards through the apertures as we open up and see how things in the middle change first of all we are at f4 and we do have that chromatic aberration still so that doesn't get fixed 3.5 2.2 still got chromatic aberration still not much of a change though 2.8 things are getting brighter 2.5 here we are at max illumination and yeah the things aren't really that much different so let's look in the corners maybe this one so here we are in the corner f 2.5 the astigmatism is pretty apparent 2.8 not really tightening up very much 3.2 again still very present 3.5 maybe some of the dimmer stars are starting to fold those wings in that sagittal astigmatism f4 at f4 here we still have pretty prominent sagittal and tangential astigmatism on the brighter stars so it's not really cleaning up as we go along unfortunately let's pop over to the develop module and here we see that not only does the lens have a built-in lens profile for chromatic aberration of course it doesn't deal with that fringing but by default it enables corrections so we're just going to uncheck profile correction so all of that vignetting that we previously saw there's actually more of it coming straight out of the camera they're just a little sneaky and they have this check by default i don't believe it was a camera setting i usually keep that type of stuff off but here we go remove chromatic aberration of course that doesn't do anything to these blue purple fringes but we've got the defringe dropper and it looks okay and i don't see any checker board so i think we're okay there as well and of course we'll re-enable profile corrections here so if you watch how the image changes has slight barrel distortion and then when we apply the correction it's flattening the center of the image away from the viewer pulling the edges out to transform them towards the viewer and bring them into the same plane and if we come down here to the scale you can zoom out and you can see the extent of it so we are losing basically any portion that ends up getting cropped out which is for the most part just the corners and a little bit of the edge near each corner not too bad there's not likely to be a lot there that we care about anyway and that's what gives us our image so this is going to be a lens that uses what we call the electronic element where the designers have actually taken into account the electronic profile corrections as a means to literally be a an electronic element in the lens formula to do some of the lifting that they can't otherwise or don't otherwise want to do optically so this is meant to be enabled by default and given the fact that we have such high resolution cameras these days such as the 60 megapixel bodies even the 24 megapixel bodies to be honest that little bit of loss on the edges and you know that stretching isn't going to affect image quality really at all from a qualitative standpoint so lens designers especially amongst very compact lenses or less expensive lenses or lenses where they can't have them be massive and heavy and expensive they're leaning on this type of electronic correction more and more and personally i don't see a huge problem with it but that's not a choice that i'm here to make for you i'll leave that up to you i hope you found this useful we're going to pop out of lightroom in a second but if you have found this video useful and you do enjoy this i would greatly appreciate if you would hit the like button if you absolutely hated this give me a thumbs down whatever you'd like to do and i love talking with folks so if you have something to say please leave me a comment it's great and all these kind of interactions between you the audience and the videos and me as a creator really helps get these videos seen by more people and that's something that i have been getting messages of like this is exactly the information i was looking for but i only found you on accident or something like that so i do really appreciate it but let's get out of here and wrap up the video well i would rank this lens kind of around 
I'm doing a review of it because I needed to justify buying it in the first place. So <laughs> that's fine. I, this lens is a lens and it fits on a camera and you can take pictures with it. And maybe those pictures are not optimally going to be astrophotography, but they could be. And I mean, what are your options really in a 40 mil lens? Uh, like there is the older Sigma 40 millimeter F 1.4, but it's ginormous and more expensive and probably more, more better. But in this case, this is a little bit of fun. I hope you found this useful. I don't know. I just hope you had a good time. I had a good time. I'm Darren. This is Fervent Astronomy. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care.